Hi, John Rhodes here and welcome back. A big hello to those of you that have just found the channel. Stay tuned because this is definitely the place to see some exciting endodontics. For those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much for your support. I do try and keep up to date with all of you via the messaging, so keep your questions coming. In this video presentation, we're looking at one of the more tricky aspects of endodontics, and that's how to renegotiate a tooth when a ledge has been formed. This mandibular molar was referred in because the dentist had come unstuck in the mesial canals. A ledge had been formed and they were unable to instrument to the full working length. Firstly, I'm going to show you how to prevent a ledge forming in the first place, but then I'll show you in this case how I renegotiated the ledge, irrigated, disinfected, and then obturated using a hybrid BC sealer technique. Hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoptive radiograph of the mandibular left first molar. The tooth is associated with a chronic abscess. It has a moderately curved mesial canal. The dentist had had trouble instrumenting to the full working length in the mesial canal and had created a ledge. Small volume CBCT clearly shows four canals in the axial view. We can also see the curvature of the mesial canal and the point at which the ledge has been created in the apical third. The canals have an acute curvature in the buccal lingual direction and this is something that cannot be seen on a radiograph. It is always worthwhile bearing in mind that the angle of curvature of the canal, certainly in the apical region, can be far more acute in a buccal lingual direction than one that you cannot visualise on a radiograph. Stiff instruments with a large restoring force will naturally try and straighten within the root canal and so have a tendency to ledge the outer curvature if they're used with force. Even super flexible night eye instruments, if worked in the same area or used inappropriately with excessive force, can ledge. So here in diagrammatic form, you can see how a ledge could form here with a night eye instrument in the apical zone where there's an acute curvature. And with perhaps a stiff instrument in the mesial canal where it's used with force. So a few golden rules. The first is never to force any instrument, be it a stainless steel file or a nickel titanium. Secondly, if you get stuck, pick up a smaller instrument, say a size 10, maybe a C pilot file, put a tiny bend in the tip and try and work your way around any blockage with plenty of irrigant in the root canal. And the third, if you're going to use a very stiff or large instrument, make sure that it has a predetermined pathway to follow. So here we have our mandibular molar isolated with rubber dam using a black number 14 clamp. And using a long tapered diamond burr, I'm just removing the temporary restoration. And just as we're finishing that off, I hit a big ball of cotton wool. Don't you just hate it when that happens? So our first peek into the access cavity with the microscope reveals that the roof of the pulp chamber is still in place and the previous root filling has been carried out through either pulp horns or little perforations in the roof. 
So it's a very simple matter to remove the roof of the pulp chamber using an LN burr. Having done that, I can now see even more calcification on the pulp floor. I've now switched from the LN Burr to an ultrasonic tip, the StarTex 3, and I'm using this to refine the access and remove any final calcifications from the pulp floor. quick flush of the access with 3% sodium hypochlorite and then I'm just going to refine the orifices of the root canals with a Pro Taper SX instrument being careful that the tip doesn't engage any obstruction certainly in those mesial canals.
Here I'm measuring the working length using an electronic apex locator. I was unable to get the file down to the full working length in the mesial canals because of the ledge. And so I then used a size 6 C pilot file with the sharp kink at the end to renegotiate past the ledge. Here you can see the sharp bend that I've placed in the tip of the instrument so that I can negotiate past the ledge. Here you can see the size 15 just slipping past the ledge and then I'll go on to use a size 20 flexor file so that I've got a reproducible pathway past the ledge. So time now for a diagnostic working length radiograph and in this case I'm using size 20 instruments. You'll see that I'm slightly long in the distal canal and I wonder whether the amalgam restoration had caused a problem with the apex locator. However, using the calibration tool on my digital x-ray system, I can readjust the working length. So with all the lengths confirmed and a nice pathway past the ledge, I can safely use my reciprocating instruments to taper the root canals very rapidly. Irrigation as always with 3% sodium hypochlorite and in this case you can see that we've got convergence between the canals. So next, a cone fit radiograph, and I like to do this with irrigant in the root canals. This prevents the tips of the GP binding. You can see that I've got good working length now in the distal root, where it was slightly long in the diagnostic radiograph. After irrigation with a sequence of 3% sodium hypochlorite, 17% EDTA and then hypochlorite, I can now dry the canals using sterile paper points. I'm going to use a BC sealer technique in this case to obturate the root canals and the irrigation protocol is key. It's sodium hypochlorite, EDTA or citric acid, followed by sodium hypochlorite. You should never use chlorhexidine if you're going to use a BC sealer. The BC sealer is injected into the coronal part of the root canals. The GP cones are being gently worked to the full working length. Once the cones are seated at the full working length, I'm searing them off at the level of the pulp floor. I'm going to use a hybrid technique here, so I'm going to vertically compact probably the coronal third of the GP and then backfill with a thermoplasticized GP.
So here you can see I'm doing a mini down pack with a heated electric plugger. and then backfilling in this case with Obtura. It's all a bit mucky down there, but it's very easy with BC sealer to clear up. In this case, I'm going to just finish off the GP with an LN burr, and then you can simply wash out the access cavity with a three in one tip. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't remove the entire amalgam restoration in this case. Well, it's partly because the referring dentist is an excellent prosthodontist and likes to create their own cause. But also, it means that there's a pool of hypochlorite through which you can work during preparation. And this is key to keeping any dentine debris in solution and preventing blockages during preparation. So here you can see the pulp floor nice and clean ready for restoration and in this case I placed some Compama Fuji 9 just to seal the access cavity before the prosthodontic specialist restored the tooth. So here again we can see the preoptive radiograph and those with eagle eyes will clearly see that the roof of the pulp chamber is still intact and we found this at the beginning of the video. The post-operative radiograph, we've got a good coronal apical seal and we've even seen some lateral canals being obturated with the BC sealer in the apical region. You can also see the ledge if you look carefully on the mesial root. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's going to be plenty more interesting cases coming your way. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.